Hey, it's Matt with Replit. And today I'm going to show you how you can add user authentication to any Python Replit deployment that you might create. And beyond that, we'll talk about how you can customize applications based on user characteristics, for example, a user's username or the Replit team that they're a part of. And this will be a pretty quick one. So we're going to jump right into it and I'll talk about how this works. Uh, so in front of me, I have a Flask application and Flask is a Python framework for rendering websites. This main file is going to render the HTML template index.html. And in that template, we're going to do some stuff with this markup language called Jinja uh, that basically lets us template these files. Uh, I'll walk through exactly what's going on here, but let's take a look at, at what we're doing. Um, so I've enabled authentication and that's in the authentication tool. Uh, well, we have to run it first for it to be enabled, but I've enabled authentication in this REPL. And what that means um, is that in the request headers, when we go to this website, Replit's going to be looking for a few variables. Um, and the variables they'll be looking for is X Replit user ID, X Replit user name, X Replit user roles. There's also Replit uh, user teams. You can see a full list of these in our documentation. Um, but basically, we're going to take those values from the headers when we request this website and pass them to our index HTML file. And we're also going to pass this list of allowed usernames. Now, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to re remove my name from the list so we can see what happens. Um, and in our index.html, we're saying, hey, if the username is in our allowed usernames, we'll say hello. And we'll also return the user ID. So right off the bat, that's customization, right? Different users are accessing the app and we're do making different actions. We're performing different actions for a username. Now you can imagine spinning up a Postgres database and storing additional data about the user um, in that database as well. And adding a Postgres database, right, is as simple as going to the Postgres tab uh, and clicking create database. Or if you're using the Replit agent, ask it for something that needs a database, it'll create one for you. Um, so you can imagine storing a username, pulling database on the user, but if we don't have uh, that username or the username is not in the allowed user, the allowed list of users, we're gonna say, hey, you're not authorized to use this application. Finally, this case actually isn't applicable because it's the default state. If nobody's authenticated, we're gonna say you're not logged in, but you can see the, the not logged in page is the replit default page. And then finally, we're gonna list the allowed users. So I'm gonna log into this page with replit. Uh, and this is very similar, right? If you've ever clicked, you know, log in with Google on a web page, uh, you get uh, an authentication page and we're using our replit account to act as a proxy uh, for that authentication mechanism. So your users don't have to create an account. We're using their Replit account as sort of a, a different authentication service. Um, and just like we'd expect, right, I'm not on the list of allowed users. So I'm getting this you're not authorized uh, response. Now, what if we add my username? My username is uh, at Matt. So replit.com at Matt, and then we'll run it. And now you can see I get a customized homepage. So uh, just like that, I can also return my user ID. And then because I'm printing out the request headers here, we can go down and actually see some more information, right? I could get my user profile image. So if you wanted uh, an icon, you know, here, so I can actually even go ahead and, and add the user profile image. What I'll do here is I'll say user uh, profile image equals, right? Request.headers.get. Uh, X user profile image. And actually, so the difference between get and accessing a list item directly has to do with how null values are handled, but I know that there aren't null values in this uh, request. Um, and then over here, uh, what I can do is if the user's logged in, I can drop a image tag. Image, so we'll actually say the width, we'll limit the width because I think my user, Im my profile image is a little big. Yeah, we can do 100. And then source user profile image replit has us on the autocomplete there. And then if I rerun this, I get a profile picture, right? So if you're building these custom applications for your team, building them for users, you want to add a nice little personal touch, you can pull in the replit um, user profile image and display it in the application as well. Uh, what are some other interesting things, right? So uh, we talked about replit teams. Um, I have a list of the replit teams that I'm in. Uh, I have some other roles and uh, characteristics, and I can use those to tailor the application to my needs. If it's an internal tool, I could control which teams have access, control what each team sees. Uh, and the the core of this application, the crux of it, um, is based on the requests. So any Python application that can handle requests, actually 
any application of any language, right, that has access to the request, whether that's JavaScript or, um, you know, other languages you're building with on Replit can use this method. I'll have a separate video on how to do this specifically in React apps because we do have a nice uh, package for managing those requests. But this has been Replit Auth with Flask and Python. Uh, and I'm Matt. Until next time, peace.